Hi everybody, lots of weird pronunciations in this one. I'm doing my best. If you want to have a go at me, use the comments. So many of history's most vast and populous civilizations have existed in Asia. Thus, the task of ruling over such empires and kingdoms required particularly talented leaders in order for their countries to thrive. In the video today, we're looking at 10 of the greatest, but not necessarily friendliest, native-born Asian rulers. These 10 are remembered for more than just their ability to shed the blood of their enemies. Number 10. Jalal ad Dun Muhammad Akbar the Great, October the 15th, 1542 to October the 27th, 1605. In 2011, Time magazine ranked Akbar among its top 25 political icons. Why? While well, he was the all-time greatest Mughal emperor of India for one, in addition to his military successes, he greatly influenced India's art and architecture. His religious tolerance and scholarly interest in varying religious beliefs is one of the many hallmarks of his long reign. He is considered not just one of Asia's greatest leaders, but one of the greatest leaders in all of world history. Number 9. Zudi, the Yongle Emperor, from May the 2nd, 1306 to August the 12th, 1424. Zudi reigned in China from July the 17th, 1402 to August the 12th, 1424. His achievements are impressive to say the least. He commissioned the Yongle Encyclopedia in 1403. He dodged a bullet, so to speak, when Timur died in 1405, just before undertaking a planned invasion of China. He then began construction of the famous Forbidden City, a world heritage site, in 1406. Number 8. Emperor Meiji the Great, November the 3rd, 18. 1952 to July the 30th, 1912. Meiji is most famous for the Meiji Restoration, a revolution in 1868 that ended the Tokugawa shogunate established nearly three centuries earlier in 1600. In this revolution, Meiji restored imperial control over Japan and modernized the country as depicted in such films as The Last Samurai. The modernization of Japan helped to make Japan a westernized industrial powerhouse capable of defeating China during the First Sino-Japanese War from 1894 to 1895. They were then able to defeat Russia ten years later in the Russo-Japanese War from 1904 to 1905. Both of these events occurred during Meiji's long reign. As such, Meiji made Japan one of the few non-European powers, the other being the United States of America, to rival the imperialist European countries as a major world power during the Age of Imperialism in the late 19th through early 20th century. Number 7. Shah Jahan, January 5, 1592 to January 22, 1666. Shah Jahan's name in Persian means ruler of the world. Despite such a boastful name, however, his actual domain was limited mainly to Mughal India. His long reign from 1628 to 1658 is considered the empire's golden age. Of all of Jahan's numerous architectural and military achievements, his single most famous accomplishment is one of the early modern wonders of the world, the Taj Mahal. This beautiful monument was built for Jahan's reportedly captivating wife, Mumtaz Mahal. Jahan imported great builders from the Ottoman and Persian empires to construct this marvel of the Mughal civilization. After Jahan's death, he too was entombed in the magnificent example of Islam. Islamic Indian architecture. Number 6. Timur the Lame from April the 9th, 1336 to February the 18th, 1405. Although most commonly known as the Lame, Timur has also been referred to as the Great and the Sword of Islam. On the one hand, his military campaigns are appalling in terms of their toll on human lives, killing perhaps 17 million people, which ranks only below such modern tyrants as Hitler and Stalin in terms of historic brutality. Yet the man who thought of himself as Genghis Khan's heir achieved a stunning degree of success during his life. By the time he took control of the Chagatai Khanate, the Great Mongol Empire of Genghis and Kublai was on the decline, with the Huan Dynasty having been replaced by the Ming Dynasty in 1368. Nevertheless, Timur fought a series of campaigns to gain recognition as Great Khan, or at least an ally of the remnants of the Mongol Empire, chiefly the Ilkhanate, Golden Horde, and Northern Huan Dynasty. His empire thus encompassed a massive portion of Asia, and he was planning to expand even further than that. He died in 1405 while setting out to conquer Ming China. In short, only death prevented him from effectively conquering the known world. One can only imagine the consequences for world history had his expedition succeeded, like so many others had. Number 5. Darius I from 550 BCE to 486 BCE Darius ruled for 36 years over the sole superpower in the world at the time. Under his reign, the Persian Empire spanned from part of Europe and Africa to the great river valleys of India. Two major works of art and architecture date from his reign, the Behistun inscription and the palace at Persepolis. Although the palace is now in ruins, these ruins still reflect a major sculptural achievement that is, today, 
a World Heritage Site. It is one of the great cultural tragedies of history that Alexander the Great's army destroyed notable portions of the palace that was built under Darius. Yet, despite Darius's many accomplishments, he also overreached in his efforts to conquer or at least punish the Scythians and the Greeks alike. The Persians suffered many losses in their campaigns against both. Had they somehow been more successful, Persia might have endured even longer as one of history's greatest empires. Number 4. Kublai Khan, September 23, 1215 to February 18, 1294. Kublai Khan is quite famous in Western culture, having been immortalized through the writings of Marco Polo and Samuel Taylor Coleridge. During his actual lifetime, though, Khan had tremendous influence on many aspects of Asian history, primarily because the Mongol Empire reached its height in many ways under his reign. He founded the Yuan Dynasty in China, which lasted in varying sizes from 1279 to 1635. Nevertheless, despite his successful expansion of the empire, Mongol expeditions under his reign also demonstrated the limits of Mongol expansionism. Their invasion of Japan was halted at the Battle of Hakata Bay in 1281. Subsequently, the Mongol invasion of the even further away island of Java also faltered in 1293. Had these campaigns succeeded, the additional influence on subsequent Asian, if not world, history would have been incredible, especially considering the place the Japanese victory has in their culture. For example, the kamikaze pilots of World War II were named after the divine wind that saved them from the Mongols. Number 3. Xerxes I of Persia, 519 BCE to 465 BCE. Though Xerxes did not found the Achaemenid Persian Empire, he ruled it at its greatest size and made it the global force that it was at the time. His failed invasion of Greece had secured him a legendary place in not just Asian, but also Western culture. He also appeared as a major character in the movie 300, which has been portrayed and spoofed in such shows like South Park and Robot Chicken. Some also identify Xerxes as the possible spouse of the biblical queen Esther. Number 2. Cyrus II of Persia from 600 or 576 BCE to 530 BCE. Cyrus, Xerxes' father, established the Persian Empire, the first tricontinental empire in history. He is one of history's first great captains, a term used by military historians to refer to the greatest military leaders of all time. As such, the empire established by Cyrus surpassed the territorial extent of predecessors such as the Assyrians and left an even greater legacy on a broad region of the world. His role in religious history is also significant, as he was the one who conquered Babylonia, freed the Jews that had been captured by the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar II, and allowed them to return to Jerusalem. As such, not only is Cyrus remembered as one of the greatest military leaders in world history, he is also revered as someone anointed by the Lord. Some Jews today even look to Cyrus as a messiah. Number 1. Genghis Khan circa 1162 to August 1227. Look, no surprises here, Genghis Khan absolutely had to be number one. He conquered more lands than even Alexander the Great and laid the basis for history's largest contiguous empire. As such, he laid the foundation for the empires ruled by Kublai and Timur. His very name is beyond ironic. It is no surprise, then, that he has been depicted in media as brutally powerful and omnipresent, such as in the Civilization series of video games and major films like The Conqueror and the Oscar-nominated Mongol. He also had a major demographic influence on Eurasia, not just in terms of people killed in his conquests and the mixing of peoples due to the establishment of his empire, but also through his own sexual relations and production of offspring, many of whom had numerous children of their own, some of whom founded great empires empires of their own. Opinions on his personality and character remain divided as to how great a unifier of Asia he was versus just being a ruthless slaughterer of humanity. Nevertheless, his influence on Eurasian history places him among the top five or so greatest military commanders in world history, as well as one of the most influential people Ever. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, hit that like button below and don't forget to subscribe. We've got brand new videos just like this every day of the week. And if you're looking for something else to watch right now, why not check out my other channel called Biographics. We look into people from history like this one at a time, much more depth really diving into their whole history. So check that out, link to on the screen now. And as always, thank you for watching.